Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Walhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil mursalin Habibi ilahi l'alamin Abil Qasimi Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad Sallallahu alayka ya maulana Ya aba abdillah Sallallahu alayka يا ابن رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين صلى الله عليك يا ابن فاطمة المظلومة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجاء إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوذ والله فوذا قال الله تبارك وتعالى في مكتب كتابي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما كان الناس إلا أمة واحدة ولولا كلمة سبقت من ربك لقني بينهم في مختلف فيه آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم أفلام صلى على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد for the love of Abu Abdullah al Husayn with the loudest of our voices صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله في مام صائب العصر والزمان روحي وأرواه العالمين لتراب مقدمه الفداء صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أضم الله أجورنا وأجوركم بمصابنا بأبي عبد الله الحسين وجعلنا الله وإياكم من الطالبين بثأره مع إمام المنصور المعيد once again, we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us with this moment and this opportunity tonight being the eighth night of the holy month of Muharram. We ask Allah azza wa jal to accept our humble efforts in this holy month. We ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala to continue to instill the love of Abba Abdullah and that of his true companions and members of the family in our hearts, inshallah. May our shortcomings be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah inspire us to get more and more closer to him, inshallah. The verse I've just quoted from glorious Quran, respected brothers and sisters, is from Quran number 10, verse 19, where Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in this beautiful verse of Quran is talking about the importance of coming together and the way and manner of handling division. Where Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ النَّاسُ إِلَّا أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said the Ummah or people are created as one single nation. وَلَوْلَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَكَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكْ لَقُدِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ فِي مَخْتَلَفُ فِيهِ Allah says they are created as one single nation but they got divided here and there. And it wasn't because of the word of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were not going to be intact in their unity. 
Now, departing from this verse of glorious Quran, our topic of tonight will be techniques of handling divisions and friction. And our examination of tonight will be of the following three stages. The first stage, we look at the necessity of having differences. How is it important for us to have differences? For me to differ from you and for you to differ from me. And the second stage of our examination, we will look at the causes of division that are rendered negative within the religion of Islam. And last but not least, we will conclude by looking at the techniques of handling them according to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the traditions of our beloved Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamahu ala. Before we begin with our examination, I want to take this opportunity to pay my tribute to the family of our beloved father whom we buried this afternoon. Haji Ali Haider, who left this world. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, heartfelt condolence to the family of Marhum, his wife, his son, and the entire members of the family, and all of us as members of this beautiful and wonderful community. And I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, two traditions, just to pay tribute to our beloved father. No doubt, death is inevitable. You cannot escape from death. What is important is to be alert and to prepare yourself. It may come to you sooner or later. I'm here one week, eight days. I met the old man here. He used to sit here. And today, he's not with us anymore. The next day you hear quietness is you. This is a moment that you get washed when you used to wash yourself. This is a moment that you used to drive yourself when you are going to be driven. This is a moment where dust and stones are your pillows. What is important is to reflect on the tradition of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, on how to prepare oneself for such a journey. Quran made it very clear, Surah Al Jumu'ah. Qul inna al maut al ladhi tafiruna minhu fa inna hu mulaqiku. Thumma turaduna ila alim al ghayb wa al shahada fa yunabbiukum bima kuntum. Ya Rasulullah told them, the death and the maut that they are all running away from, wherever they were, they will find it or death will find them. And when death comes to them, there is only one thing. You will be informed of what you used to do in this world. That is why scholars said, وَمَا الْمَرُءُ إِلَّا حَدِيثًا بَعْدَ Insan is nothing but what will be said after him. If you are good, good will be said about you. If one happens to be bad, akhlaq, that will be said about you. Hence we are told, when you die, when people take you, there are two things that escort you to your cemetery or to your grave. One is your good deed, and the other one is the wealth that you have accumulated, or bad deed. One will come back, and the other will remain. The deed, whether good or bad, it will remain with you, and the world will come back home. Hence, we are told in the tradition, whenever we wake up every day, the earth address us. When you wake up in the morning, earth talk to you. What will the earth say? Tamshi ala bahri, thumma masiru kafi batni. Oh Nur, you walk on me, but don't forget that your destination is in me. And the second form of address that will come from the earth to us every morning, tathnabu ala bahri. You sin on me, but don't forget that you may be punished in me. And the third one is what? You eat unlawfully on me, and the insect may eat you in me. 
So therefore, brothers and sisters, we need to prepare ourselves. Therefore, Rasulullah, whenever they would go to cemetery and bury someone, he would use the verse of glorious Quran to advise the Ummah. Oh, my beloved Ummah, my beloved companions, I need not to belabor the point. Let this become an example for each and every one of you. That is why we are told Kafa bil mawti wa Death is enough a lesson. You don't want someone to come and remind you and teach you again. The person that you sit next to, you greet now and then at the mosque, you eat together, you pray together. Tonight is life of a barzakh has begun. Uh -huh. And last but not least, I want to talk to his son and to his members of the family as to what are your roles and your responsibilities towards your departed father. Very important. Because someone came to our beloved prophet and he asked, Ya Rasulullah, I lived with my mom and dad. Mom fell seriously ill, looked after mom. She departed, I buried her. Then dad also fell ill, looked after dad, tried everything to make him happy and to comfort him. Dad also died. Have I done with my responsibility towards them? Rasulullah said, no, your responsibility begins now. Wow. Then he asked Rasulullah, what are my roles and responsibilities? I've given them everything of this dunya. I sheltered them. I clothed them. I provided them everything according to my capability. What did, what did Rasulullah say? He said, it is their right upon you to remember them with your sadaqah, with your dua, with the recitation of Quran until the moment you depart from this world. Therefore, the foremost tradition of Rasulullah made it very clear. إِذَا مَا تَبْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ When the son of Adam departs from this world, huh? all your deeds are done. Finish. These slogans, me, 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 I, 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 we, 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 finish. Over. Beauty, over. Fame, over. Rasulullah said, only one of the following four is in a position to come to your rescuer. First one, sadaqatun jariya. Running sadaqah. What is running sadaqah? <coughs> People need classroom and you contributed towards that. So long as they continue to benefit from it, it will come to your grave. You help in building a mosque. You help in providing water to people who had no water. There's something, some sort of charity, whatever. It will help you in your life of barzakh. Number two, Rasulullah said, Awa ilmun yuntafa'ubeh. Allah blesses you with knowledge. As small as it may be. And you sincerely, for the pleasure of Allah, you impart that knowledge. Not for fame or anything of this dunya. When you die, this knowledge will help you in your life of barza. And number three, Rasulullah said, Awaladun salih yad'u for you leave behind a pious child or daughter who reminds you in his or her dua. So Allah said, there is no barrier between the dua of a child and the acceptance of Allah on behalf of the Father. Amen. So let's remember the marhum with our dua. May Allah grant him Jannat al firdaus All his good deeds and good action, may he see the benefit of them on the day of Qiyamah. Because Imam Amir al muminin taught us, huh? taught us, and this should serve as a lesson for us in this holy month of Muharram and going forward.
<coughs> a great personality in Najaf used to attend Bahful Kharij. Bahful Kharij means the highest level of studies in Islamic seminary. And used to be next to the Marja in Najaf at the Holy Mosque of uh, uh, Shrine of Imam Ali. This person was about to die. Fell ill. People came, visited him, and the early Marja decided to visit him. When the Marja visited him, spoke to him, he said, Say, Ashadu Allah, Ila, 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 then he said, Ashadu Allah, Ila, Ila. Say, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, then he said, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Say, Ashadu Anna Ali Waliullah, he couldn't. This is a good man. Lovely person. What's going on? Marja repeated. Almost half a day. Ashara Allah ilaha illallah. Ashara Allah ma'am. Ali wa lillahi. Marja left him. Fortunately, Allah cured the person. He did not die. So the person stopped going to the lesson of that Marja. One day Marja was in the market. He met the person. Were you the one that we visited? He said, yeah. Can I ask you a question? He said, yes. Why is it that when I was saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, you were responding, but Ali yun walillah, you refused. Then he said the marja, when you were telling me Ali walillah, I see something very dark telling me if you say Ali walillah, you are finished. The marja asked him, is there anything wrong that you do because you always visit Imam Ali, Majlis of Abba Abdullah. He said, I was never sincere. I wanted people to praise me. I was never sincere. Allah has given me another chance to perfect my sincerity and to do things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's come to the discourse of tonight. Techniques of handling divisions or frictions. These are very, very important lessons for us, for us lovers and followers of Amir al -Mu'mini. Why? Because you see, togetherness is key for the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we are told in the riwayah of Rasulullah, even when it comes to performing or establishing salah, we are told in the riwayah, I'm just giving you a summary of that riwayah, not to take much time on that. When you come to pray as jama'ah, First, Allah will look at the heart of the Imam. Is he sincere? Is the Imam sincere? Is the Imam genuine? Oh, it's not genuine. Not every Imam is genuine. Not every speaker is genuine. Some of us, we have ulterior motives. Some of us, we have our own aim. Some of us are not doing it for al bayt and for Allah. So therefore, Allah will look at the heart of the Imam. But rewise said, if the heart of Imam is so rusted, Allah will not say, I'm not going to accept it as Allah. No, 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 no. Allah will look at the heart of all those who are praying behind the Imam. The rewise said, if for whatever reason, none of them is pure, they are all not sincere and there is no ikhlas or niya. You know what the Rasulullah says? Allah still will not say, I'm not going to accept. No, Allah will look at the way you come together. Because of that togetherness, Allah will accept your salah. <laughs> so therefore, togetherness is crucial. Yadullahi <laughs> ma'al The power and the strength of Allah is with people. Now let us look at the necessity of having differences. In other words, to differ is a natural phenomenon. It is something you cannot stay away from. In fact, differences are means of perfection. That is why in sociology, علم الاجتماع, scholars said, اختلاف الطاقات يؤدي إلى الاستخدام واختلاف القانون. Said having differences amongst ourselves does two things. 
Number one, we shall explain more into details later. It helps us to benefit from each other's potential and talent. <clears throat> and number two, it helps us to come up with different creativity on how to handle matters. Now, Quran sanctioned that. Surah to Rome, verse 22. Look at this verse. So many verses, about 14 verses in Quran talks about women ayatihi, women ayatihi, women ayatihi. Last night I mentioned one. Your wife is yourself. It's a sign of Allah. Fine. Now, tonight also another ayah. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْعَالَمِينَ Yani Allah says, amongst my signs, is what? خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ the creation of the earth and the heaven. Don't just look at the earth and heaven and keep quiet. You know what's the reason for this? It is to take you closer to Allah. It is to bring Allah to your heart. It is to ensure that you feel the presence of Allah wherever you are. That is why one verse of Quran, before we end this verse, Allah says, سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِ بِرَبِّكْ أَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ Allah says, Ummah, slowly but surely, step by step, I will show you my signs in the universe and in your souls until it transpired to you that no one is truth but Allah. So the sign of Allah, غَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ But look at my point about the differences that we have which I will explore. وَاَقْتِلَافِ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ And the differences of the tongues which you have. Some are English speaking. Some are indo pak Some are Pakistanians. Some are Iranians. Some are, you know, different languages. These are there to equip us with spiritual mechanisms to get closer to Allah. Then Allah says, and your color. All these colors, some are black, some are yellow, some are pink, some are red. These are all there not to make me proud, not to make me raise my shoulder. La, 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 la. It is to take you closer to your Lord. So the Quran sanctioned that in Surah to Ruh. So why differences are necessity? One. It's because when we sit here, look at all of us here, sitting here. Huh? She has a Ramir al We are not the same. We have differences in fikra, in thoughts, processes. Your thinking is not the same as my thinking, Habibi. I think differently, you think differently. You find wife and husband. Huh? She thinks differently and the husband thinks differently. You find wife lefty, husband righty. When I say lefty, I'm not talking of the one who right with left or right now. I'm talking of the division of the brain. Brain is divided into two halves. Left and the right side. And each one has a role to play in our lives. If you are dominated by the right side, it means you don't want changes. You want one thing has to continue, no changes. But if you are dominated by the left side, you want changes, metamorphosis. Always there must be changes in what you do. So some people, they are dominated by right, some by left, some they are able to reconcile between the right and the left. How Allah created us. Allah, Allah, Allah. So we are not the same. Allah made it that way. When it comes to badania, our body, the power we have is two different things. Yours is different from mine, and mine is different from you. Psychologically and mentally, we're not the same. Some are very smart and witty. Some are very slow. Some accept change and apply and implement that and that. Some are not ready to do so. 
So we are different altogether. But you know why? Number one, why we must have differences? It's because if all will be doctors, then there will be no benefits. Assuming everyone in Lagoa will become doctor, what will happen? Doctors will not get money. <laughs> Because no one will get sick and go to someone. You rather cure yourself. So he's going to pay. It means you are depending yourself. Like A depending on B and B depending on A. We call it circular in theology. It doesn't work out. You have to be a doctor. You have to be a nurse. I'm not saying you are a nurse. Okay? Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Somebody must be a carpenter. Somebody must be an engineer, civil, chemical, whatever. So that we are able to complement each other. This is what they call istikhdam. We must have differences so that we complement each other. We reach out to one another. How? Say a person is a billionaire, billionaire, and you want to establish a firm or a business. Upon all your money, you cannot do it alone. You need someone who has not even gone to any school, who doesn't have any formal education to be part of it for you to become more and more billionaire. You want to build a mosque? You will need a carpenter, you will need a tiler, you will need different people. So Allah made us different so that we are able to complement each other. We are able to reach out to one another. That is why Allah in Surah Al-Hujurat, Inna khalaknakum min dhakarin wa unfa, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa kabaila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum indallahi akramakum. Different tribes and nations, male and female, no deal. But it is to have Consciousness of the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second reason as to why there must be differences amongst us is because through differences we are able to do a lot of wonders. Because Imam Amir said, Man nas sharakahum fi akuli. Whoever consult the other one and said, come, let's do it together. Bring your power, I bring my power. You know what Imam Ali says? You have joined your intellect to his intellect and you become powerful. Aye, aye, aye. Therefore, we need these differences. But now question. What are the causes of negative differences? And I want you to pay attention, brothers and sisters. There are so many differences today we have in the world, which we cannot deny. You have a Shias, you have a Sunnis. These are good. I don't call it bad. Among the Sunnis, divisions. Maliki, Hanbali, Shafi, and be fine. Okay. Among Shia, Zaidi, Ismaili, Waqifiya, you call it. Now, among the Islam Ashari, this one say that marja, that one say that marja. This is what I call negative. This one can't blame that marja. That one can't blame that marja. This one say, no, my marja is better than your marja. That we fighting one another as lovers and followers of Allah. Right? This one say, I will not go to that mosque because they subscribe to a marja. Who are you? Are you that learned to be able to know this merger is better than the other? Wow. 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 Whatever happens, you want to do, let him do it. Nothing wrong with that. You think you are right, what you have chosen is the best. So now these differences are there. Positive ones, as I explained, and negative ones. Now, how do you understand the causes of these differences, brothers and sisters. There are two major causes. One of them we explained last night. The notion that whatever I do is absolute right and any other person is wrong. 
There are people they like to dominate. When they talk, everybody must shut his mouth. Because they think what they read is the right thing. Who told you? We explained last night, I don't want to repeat it. The second one is the most important one, which Quran explained. But before Quran explained, Quran says we have two types of differences. We have اختلاف اجتماعي and اختلاف ديني. We have social differences and we have religious differences. Social differences, we know. He is engineer, he is this fact. Religious differences is what is causing fitna. What is causing a lot of problems. It is making us retrogress rather than progressing. Now the cause of it, I refer you to Quran. Bakara 213. Take note of these verses, brothers and sisters. 213. Allah in this particular verse explains two types of differences. The social and the religious. كَانَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ وَأَنزَلَ مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي مَخْتَلَفُ That's the point. Allah says people were one nation. Then they became different. Different means what? Black, white, yellow, pink, Asian, American, African, European. No problem. Allah said we send the prophets to come and make sure that these differences doesn't make them lose, but rather develop. The second one Allah mentioned, they continue to differ. After that, the prophet came to them with the message and the teachings. We differ. And Quran said the reason for that is zulm. Bagian bainakum. Zulm. Setam guards. Zulm. Why do I differ with you? Because of the zulm I do towards you and zulm you do towards me. How? We sit in a boardroom, we discuss. I feel I am right and you feel you are right. But Islam says there is no right, there is no wrong. Just talk. But because I feel you are too little towards me or your mind is too weak, I decide to distance myself from you. That's where the differences come from. <laughs> Therefore, Quran said all these negativities that you see and the negative vibes that we see, it is a buggy and bainagum. It's because of the zulum. In fact, Islam says, for me not to talk to you is zulum against you and zulum against myself. This is what is causing all these problems and causing all this fitna. And Islam says, any division of friction which is not been handled according to the teachings of Allah cause three things. Number one, it divides the ummah apart completely. Wow. Ah. Today you go to certain communities. The daughter is making taklid of one marja. Son is making one marja. And this simple thing is normal. But sometimes you find people fighting because of that. You go to Shia, to Shia. This marja has an A concept. And I don't support it. You find people are fighting. Have you seen where she asked they kiss him Maraji? It's happening today. Some like the concept of Wilayat Faqih, for instance. People who are not in favor of it, they attack those who are doing it, and vice versa. It continues to divide the Ummah. When are you going to prepare for the reappearance of Imam Zaman if you don't stop these divisions? These are little things. But it is doing harm to Shi'i community. Big time. Big time. Jazakallah. Today people have TV stations. They mention one Fulan Marja case. When are we going to overcome that? So the first danger of it is what? 
it widens and deepens the division. And so long as we are not together, Allah will not be with us. He will go and pick a new one. Give an example. A Christian family. I recited the Amasa a few nights ago. They joined Abba Abdullah. Less than a week, they became Muslims. And they were the first family Matthias alongside Abba Abdullah. If we have it, and we don't look after it, Allah will substitute us with others. <laughs> Quran made it very clear. <coughs> Surah Al-Anfal, verse 46. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَزْحَبَ إِهُمْ O oh, Ummat al Islamiya, Muslim or Ummah, and here I'm saying, O oh, Shi'ani Ali, Shi'ani Hussein, Wala Tanaza, O oh, don't argue, huh? If I argue, argue in a nice way. Because if you argue to show animosity, Tafshalu, you will fail this man. You will fail. Today, this was happening, unfortunately. Number two danger of such a negative division. I follow this one. I don't follow that one. We follow this one. We don't follow. Your power and strength will go astray. You are an engineer. You are a lawyer. You are a doctor. You are a soccer player. A huh? football player. Instead of coming together, now we try to understand which marja, which other marja, which no, no. power is going in vain. And the last danger of having such a division, according to the teachings of Islam, is that one person will end up ruling everyone. Let's respect our marriage. Let's honor them. Let's cherish them. I and you have not studied high ishtihad level. So I and you are not in that position to know this one is better than the other. Make your little bit of research. Follow the one you follow and submit yourself to it. Done. Last examination. How do we handle the vision? Techniques from our advice. <coughs> Division could be your family doesn't talk to that family. Division could be we all come to the mosque, but him, I don't want him to sit next to me. <laughs> Division could be no, 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 no. I want my children to be successful, but his children, no, let them suffer. <laughs> it begins there. How do we handle it? Number one, go back to what we mentioned last night. You must know that each and every person has a right over the other. You will not repeat that. But I take you to verse of Quran. Surah Al-Hujarat 11 and 12. Ishtanibu kathiram min al-dhan Inna ba'da al Stay away from doubting each other. Imam Amin said, give 70 excuses. Nobody will be able to give them. He's trying to say, don't doubt. Kathiram min al inna ba'da al esm. Allah says, some of the doubt you have is a sin. Then he said, wala tajassaswa. Don't try to follow the person to know his fault. Wala yet the Babu Kumbaba and don't make a giba of one another. So, number one, to handle it, we need to know that a Mu'min or a Muslim has right over the other. That's number one. We don't want to go there. The second technique is that is to have the know how of a handling division or debate or argument. 
and they know how I treat. Number one, okay, you said your marriage is a Okay, do you have knowledge about marriage? Are you here to debate me now? Before you debate something, make sure you have knowledge about it. Don't debate without having knowledge about it. Don't say Fulan said, that one said, that Shrek said, and you do not have knowledge to debate. You ask him, I say, no, my common sense. Yes, your common sense is good, no problem. But first, you need to have a knowledge about the matter. That's number one. Number two, in terms of the knowledge, you need to have a mawdu. You have to be principled when you debate a person. Principle in the sense that don't wait somebody speak like one hour and you take five minutes of what he said and you spread rumors against the person. This is what is called some fitna in Muslim Ummah today. Oh, yes, say, Gambi Shek Nora, Habibi, he mentioned something. Then I take it, I continue. It causes fitna. You have to be mawdu'i, you have to be principled. Get all the information before you start talking about it. If you don't have the information, then you have to give quiet. Because you have to make give a man that where it is due. Yes, and the last one, brothers and sisters, is Siyanatul Mushtama. Is to be overprotective. I use the word over of your community. Because when I differ with you and we curse each other. You don't suffer. I don't suffer. The community suffers. Uh -huh. I go my way. I pray in the house. <laughs> do I go my way? I do in the house. And the community suffer. So how do you protect the community? Two things. Number one, understand that there will always be differences. Mm. It's inevitable. There will always be differences. Baba, your tongue and your teeth also they differ. When you have like nice lamb chop, but when there is a bone there which is giving you some stress up there, oh you put sometimes the tongue and the teeth they collide, isn't it? And you'll see a bit of blood on your tongue. But the next day when you put the food, the tongue will accept and the teeth will start biting. <coughs> There must be differences. It has to happen. If you don't want to see differences, then you don't want to help. And number two, we should do away with the notion of bringing someone down. Sukutul akhari. You want to bring me down? Yeah. Don't bring somebody now. When I meet you, my dear, I said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa I'm praying for you. Is it from my heart? Is dua I'm making? And when I say this salam, look at Quran. Salam is an attribute of Allah, isn't it? But it's a sort of creation. That is why Laylatul Qadr, we are told Salamun Hiya Hatta. That Salam is enough blessing for all those who go to the mosque for Laylatul Qadr. Uh -huh. The same Salam on the day of Qiyamah, when all of us are in Jannah with Fatima al Zahra. Oh. From Allah, of course, Allah doesn't talk like the way I talk. Allah doesn't have tongue like they have tongue. Allah is not material, it's not a matter that has weight and occupies a space. Huh? But Allah will send the message. What will be the message? Salam on Kaulan Rabbi Rahim. That salam is enough. Better than whatever you're going to get in Jannah. The Huris, you want to, men when they hear Huri, they jump up. And... <laughs> of course, there are also ladies Huri for them. <laughs> And Islam says, your wife in the dunya is better than Huri. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Huris are created from the worship we do in this dunya. Mm -hmm. When one of you decides to make two raka'a after majlis, you know what happened? Allah will decide to create one angel mm -hmm. and one Huri. This is a 
The more ibadah you do, the more angels Allah creates. And the more huri. So your husband and your wife, tomorrow we are talking about marriage and family, inshallah. They are better than huris and the angels. So we don't want the huris, we want our wives and we want our husbands, inshallah. Salam, you say to a woman. Same salam Allah sent to Ibrahim when they put Ibrahim in fire. Ya naru kuni bardan wa salama. So when you say salamu alaykum shaknoor, it means something big and huge in the eye of Allah. You making me dua, beautiful dua. Stay in peace, be protected shaknoor, be blessed, achieve whatever you want as legitimate desire. That's the meaning of salam. Hence, Abba Abdullah, Jafar al-Sadiq taught us, when a mu'min says salam, it is wajib for other mu'min to respond to that salam, but from the bottom of his or her heart. Ah. Ah. And in conclusion, brothers and sisters, tonight is the night of Hawaj. Abdul Fadl al Abbas is regarded as Babul Hawaj. Humbly request from all of you, brothers and sisters. Stay after the majlis and make your sincere dua. We have problems. We have difficulties. Some of us have stress. Some of us have financial problems. Some of us have social problems. Some of us, we have marital issues. Some have political problems. No better time to ask Allah after the ma'atam aza of Abul Fadl al Abbas. Muharram is an opportunity. Don't rush and go home tonight. Stay and sincerely ask Allah through the sacrifice of Abbas. And make the Maktam al Azhar. We are entering into the serious night of Ahlul Bayt. Tonight being the night of Abbas, tomorrow being the night of Ali al Akbar. And of course, we will then get to the night of Ali al Asghar and the Ashur of Mawla Hussein. Alayhi salam. We always remind ourselves of Ziyaratul Nahiya. Of Imam Sahib al Asr was Sabah. La andu badna ka sabahan wa masaha. Wala abakiyanna alayka badala tumu'a idaba. I will mourn for you, Hussein, day and night. And I will cry for you, blood, instead of tears. Today, tonight, make ma'atam for Abul Father. Everybody should stay behind after the ziyara, make dua, come forward and do the ma'atam. It's a sign of showing your grief and sadness for the shahada of Abul Father. I invite you, let us enter into the masa'ib of Abul Fadl al <laughs> Allahu Akbar. You know, Ayatollah Mar Ashi Najafi has got the largest library in the holy city of Qom. In Qom, before you get the Haram of Bibi Ma'asuma, he's got a library there. He's got old, old books. Some said some of the books were written by the Imams. I'm not sure, but that's what I heard. When he was dying, he was here. He gave us here to his son. He had a handkerchief, which he used to rub the tears of the masaib of Ahl al He said to his son, my son, when I die, bury me with this handkerchief. <laughs> Ask him why. He said, because every year Muharram drops of tears gone. How many people in the night of Abbas, they raise up their hand and ask Allah, Allah, 
help me out, Allah. They go back home and they receive what they want from Allah. Ummul Banin gave four sons alive on the tenth day of Muharram. And Ummul Banin taught us, brothers, this is how we enter into the Masaba, not to forget the Majlis Aza of Ahmed. She said, do Majlis in your house. Ummul Banin. Read about Ummul Bani. Read the history after Karbala. Ummul Bani says, if the need be, do majlis now and then at your home. When did she teach us this? After Karbala al Muqaddasa. We are told Ummul Bani would visit Jannatul Baqi. Ajrukum <laughs> Allah. Allah bless your tears. She would go, where would she go in Jannat al -Baqi? She would go and sat next to the grave of Hassan al-Mushtaba. <laughs> Arose on the body of Hassan. We are told when Abba Abdullah brought Imam Hassan in Jannat al -Baqi to bury him, he had to take his time to remove arrows from the body. Umul <laughs> Banin <laughs> will sat next to the grave of Hassan al-Mushtaba. What would she do? This way she taught us not to forget the masaib and the majlis of Ahlul. She would collect sand. And she would make five domes out of the sand. She would cry and cry until Marwan ibn Hakam. Marwan was the enemy of Ahlul Bayt. Until Marwan began to cry by hearing the voice of Umm al banin lamenting on the Musiba of Karbala. Enemy! She touched the heart of enemy. They came and asked Umm al banin Oh Umm al banin you lost only four sons, but why do you make five domes? She said, oh Allah, the fifth dome is for my son, Abba Abdullah. <laughs> Why Umm al -Banin? Because she said there was no one to cry for Allah. <laughs> and there is one narration which pierces and breaks the heart of the lava of Ahl al -Bayt. Reported from Imam Zain al Abidin. Imam Zain al Abidin was told, Umm al -Banin, whenever Abbas was mentioned, she wouldn't cry. <laughs> So Imam Zal Abdin came to Umm al-Banin. Oh, Umm al-Banin, why is it that whenever all the Ahl al-Bayt and companions of Karbala are being mentioned, you cry? But when Abbas is being mentioned, you don't cry. You know what she said? Allah, I do not believe Abbas left Abba Abdullah at home. <laughs> why would I be, why has Abbas left Abba Abdullah? This is where the Masiba of tonight began. Imam Zain al Abidin began to narrate what happened to Abbas on the tenth day of Muharram. Imam Zain al Abidin said, Oh, Umm al Banin, I saw Uncle Abbas. He rode the horse and he promised Sakina, Rukaya, Rabah. I'm going to bring water. Oh, look at the Musiba. It's a very heartbroken Musiba tonight. Huh? He said, Umm al Banin, we saw Uncle Abbas went to the water of Forax. He came down from the house. He went, we saw Uncle picked the water. When the water, he was about to sip the water and drink. Then Abbas addressed his soul. He said, oh, my soul, will you drink from this cold water when my master, Abba Abdullah, is going to be fed from the syrup of swore? <laughs> Abbas did not drink the water. So Imam Zalab said, oh, Malbanin, we saw uncle came and rode the horse, and he began to go. Imam Zalab said, oh, Malbanin, the first musibah of uncle Abbas is that as he was going, 
Someone appeared behind a tree <laughs> and he was behind the Abul Fadl al Abbas. He lifted his sword and he struck the right hand of Abbas. <laughs> You know, when you strike, the hand doesn't just get removed. It began to hang there. Because the guy did not strike it completely. Abbas had the flag. He was struggling to hold the flag. He said, Umm Banin, we saw uncle struggling. <laughs> then he said, Umm Banin, uncle struggle. You know, now you've been strike heavily, blood is coming. How are you going to walk? How are you going to ride the horse? He said, we saw uncle Abbas struggling, struggling, struggling. He was moving. Then all of a sudden, someone also <laughs> appeared from behind. <laughs> And he strike the left hand of the other. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless you with the ziyara of Karbala. You will see the spot where all the hands of Abbas were chopped off. Recorded in the history. Ayatullah in Naini wrote in his book. That one night in Muharram, I recited the Masaib of Abu al-Fadl al Ah, Look at this Muslim. <laughs> Ayatollah Naini said, when I went back home, <laughs> as I was sleeping, I dreamt Fatima al-Zahra. <laughs> Ayatollah Naini wrote in his book, it's not a hadith, it's from the book. What was the dream? He said, I saw Fatima and she was crying. <laughs> So I thought maybe I made a mistake in the takrir of the musibah of Abu al-Fadl. Huh? So Naini said, I asked Fatima al-Zahra, Oh Amma, have I made something wrong in the majlis of Abu al-Fadl? <laughs> Bibi Fatima told Allah to lie in Naini. No, 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 you have not made any mistake. But I want you to remember one line. Whenever you recite the musibah of Abu al-Fadl, huh? what is the line? It breaks the heart of a Shia. He said, understand, Naini. Whenever a person falls from the horse, <laughs> he falls with two hands. <laughs> you know when you fall, you fall, the hands are in front, huh? Then she said, the only one who fell from the horse without the hands was my son, Abel Fadl. <laughs> Personally, I don't know how to describe it. How did Abu al-Fadl Abbas fell from the horse? <laughs> Allahu Akbar, ajrukum Allah. When you fall, you fall like this, you die. He was coming down, no hands, blood, soul halfway gone. Halfway, the soul gone. Then Imam Hussain al Abidin said, Oh, Umm al -Banin, I know you love Hassan, you love Hussein, you love Sakina, you love Ruqayya. This will break your heart, love of Abbas. <laughs> then Imam Hussain said to Umm al Banin, Umm al -Banin, you know who informed us Abbas is dying? <laughs> she said, No. He said, When the battle was going on, Abbas was trying. Maybe Sakina was on the shoulder of Zainab. <laughs> All of a sudden, she said to Zainab, Auntie Zainab, Uncle Abbas is gone. <laughs> then Zainab asked her, why are you saying that? You know what was the response of Zagina? She said, I saw the flag falling down. <laughs> flag is falling, so Uncle is gone. Abba Abdullah said, we saw then Abba Abdullah began to move towards the body of Abbas. <laughs> but you know, when Abba Abdullah was approaching Abbas, Abbas could not see anymore. Because you know, Hurumala, he strike the arrow on the eye of Abbas. <laughs> and you know, when he struck the arrow, what happened? The blood blocked the eye of Abbas. 
So when Abba Abdullah steps reaching Abbas, Abbas said, oh man, if you are here to hurt me, do not hurt me. I've been hurt so much. I want to bid final farewell with my master Hussein. And Hussein said, oh Abbas, it is me, Hussein. <laughs> Since when you were born, I loved you, Abbas, so much. Then Abbas the Lord said, Oh, Abbas, I am sorry I could not come to help you. <laughs> then Abbas the Lord raised the head of Abbas and placed on his lap. Huh? That is when the painful conversation starts. Allahu Akbar. This Imam Zain Labdin was informing Ummul Banina. You know what Abbas said to Abba Abdullah? I am sorry, my master. I'm sorry. I will not be there to help you, my master. Then Abbas said, Oh, my master who said, Say to Sakina, I am sorry. <laughs> I couldn't bring the water anymore. Yeah. Then he said, Oh, my master Hussein, ask Auntie Zainab to forgive me. I will not be there. And then Abbas said to Abba Abdullah, Oh, my master, when I was born, and I was in a cradle. I could not open my eye until the moment you took me, Hussein. <laughs> now I am dying and I cannot see you, Hussein. <laughs> then Abbas requested one thing from Abba Abdullah. Can you move my head from your lap? He said, why? Arbab al said, this is not in the Riwaya. Arbab al Makatil mentioned, they said Abbas was trying to indicate something. I am dying and I am on your lap. But Shimmer will sat on your chest. Shimmer did not just sit on the chest. Started poking the lip of Hussein. <laughs> the final moment. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Tonight you must do ma'atam for Abel Fadl al Abbas. Everyone, young and old, male and female. Then Imam Zain al Abdi, when he finished. Um Banin said to him, I know Abbas would not leave Hussein alone. But narration says, there were five ladies in Medina. Upon hearing more about Karbala and Abbas, they went and started asking people to remove the roofs of their houses. Um Banin, Zainab. Layla, Ramla, all of them said, remove. And they said, one of them is Umul Banin. Why Umul Banin? Should we remove? He said, no, I want to taste the heat which was suffered by Hussein. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon. Wa sayyadamu al-nabina balamu ayyamu al-salamu yankalibun. Well, I'll give it to you. Let me put the key down, say, down, say, down, say.